That would be today is the 23rd. Right? Today is March 23rd, 2024. God is great, worthy to be praised. Blessed be the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I want to give you the... I want to give you praise and thanks that God is moving in our midst and we bless him. This is Might 4100 and the word today is detection for the perfection. Detection for the perfection. Detection for the perfection. Here's another uh, kingdom law that I discovered. There are times when God expects us to detect so he can perfect. Let me say it again. There are times when God wants us to detect that he might perfect, which means he applies pressure to our spiritual senses to seek him. God is not always a surface God. He is a God that demands that you go deeper and come for him. This is the famous song by Stevie Wonder, All in the Keys of Life. And there's a certain song or certain keys that God wants you to play. And it's funny that God knows us so well. He knows what demands to put on us versus the demands of others. And I always say there's a right way to judge and there's a wrong way to judge. So the standard God sets for you might be different than the sand standard he sets for me. <laughs> the game rules might change when it comes to me versus the game rules for you. God is the ultimate uh, pace setter. He's the ultimate delegator. He knows what he has to do to perfect you and to mature you. I'm always amazed how Jesus would walk up to certain people and minister and deal with them much differently than the last person. I call this message detection for the perfection. So I always ask God to give me a detective spirit, not a suspicious spirit, not a suspicious spirit, but a detective spirit so I can be a great detective, so I can detect. And you know, if you get enough of detections, it helps you do a great job as a detective come up with all the bits and pieces and put them together and they come with a case and so a lot of times I think what God does is push us to move into an area of higher levels of detection you know when your detection levels get deeper and more profound it creates your perceptivity you're able to pick up on stuff see stuff quicker, find stuff faster and hear God even more clearer that's why Jesus, he that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. That means there's a sound being released, can you hear it? There is something released from heaven, can you see it? There is some uh, of the mood swing and the feeling of God, can you hear it? Can you feel it? Can you pick up with it in your spirit? So there is a detection for the perfection. We, detecting is not demonic, it's not false doctrine. It's what God says, gather the clues the mouth of two or three witnesses let every word be established God is a God of confirmation he'll do things in patterns and twos and threes maybe fours and fives but some of you are so mature God say one time and you move when I move you move just like that so it's important to understand why I call this message detection for the perfection and I'm figuring out as I train KOM when I say KOM I mean everybody that's under my covering I'm training them how to detect stuff person that learns to detect they're moving in levels of perfection now when God uses the term perfection it doesn't mean mistake proof, it doesn't mean sinlessness totally it means you're at the level that I need you to be at at this time, that's what I use as a term perfection you're at the level of what I expect you to be at at this time, some people or at a level that God go, whoa, you're going even deeper than I expected. That's what Jesus says. Wow, I have not found anyone in all of Israel that had this level of faith. So the Roman centurion soldier blew Jesus away 
So there are times that people, God says, okay, if you reach level one, I'm satisfied. And you say, I'm going to go better than that. God said, whoa, go ahead, Mike. Go, you're going to go deeper. And say, yeah. I call that detection for the perfection. Let's go back to a foundational kingdom scripture principle that we kind of miss in Genesis 3. After Adam and Eve had fell, or Adam and his wife fell, scripture says they heard the Lord, the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, which means if you try to interpret that verse by an American mind or what I call our perverted, twisted form of fallen Christianity, you're going to say that don't make any sense because how does the voice of the Lord God be walking? in the garden in the cool of the day I mean them statements don't really line up in your little cute uh, American box but what it does do it forces you to seek to chase to learn to have to play the role of a detective gather clues look at stuff from different points of views uh, read other, read other per, of a person's work study biblical scholars, find out the Jewish traditions, what's the great minds of old that studied this story, what do you come up with? It enforces you to connect to other people, to study um, the people's tutelage. You don't expect to know everything yourself. One thing I love about the Bible, iron sharpens iron. We only become arrogant when we think we're the only iron. And sometimes when I talk to preachers, they swear they're the only one because they got a revelation. I, I was the first one to say it. I said, no, you're not. I heard 25 people say it. You was the first one to come up with it in your head. I, I'm the first one to see it. I'm, oh, I never heard this before. All right, let's say that. You never heard it. Don't mean other folks haven't heard it. So don't, don't, don't get up into that arrogant spirit. This is what God showed me. This is where I'm at right now. This is what God has. You know, that, 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 that's good. Don't, don't do the old, uh, no one else got it but me. No, don't do that. Don't do that. That sounds stuck up. That sounds arrogant. What you want to say is, this is what God showed me. I never saw I never saw this before. Don't say no one's ever said that. Uh -uh -uh. You got to say, this is what I never saw. And a lot of times when folks be talking about they never saw, they never, they never left their home city. They never been in any other ministry besides their little fraternity group. You know, your denominations are your fraternity groups. So, if you only hang out with Baptists, you're going to always get someone who thinks Baptist. If you only hang out with Pentecostals, you hang out with folk who look at things Pentecostal. You hang out with folks apostolic. You know, you know what begins to make you deeper when you break out your cycles? And let me spend time with some folk I don't always be with. Let me look at someone else's social media site that's a little different than mine. Let me look at a point of view I never looked at before. See, that, that is when you start to say detection for the perfection. I have discovered, I said I, as a teacher and a professor over the Word of God over 40 years, is that there are many things written in the biblical text that's not truly stated. I mean, it's there, it's in principle, it's in form, but you won't see it in written word form in the biblical text. But in between the line and by your ability to be a great detective, you gather clues and hints and you hear God speaking deeper than just written in the Bible. I found that some folks think they deep because they can read scriptures. Uh, my, I got a, I got a granddaughter. That's, I got a, I, I got a grandson that's six years old. He can read. So reading scriptures and quoting scriptures doesn't make you as deep as you think. What makes you deep is able to divide the text to know truth, to understand what does it mean when the scripture says iron sharpens iron. Able to discern and detect and understand the scripture. He that has an ear to hear, let him hear. Is he talking about physical ears or is he talking about he that desires to be open to God and keep your ears open to understand God will give you more. To the wise, you get wiser. You know, why is the scripture says spend no time, some time with foolish people, avoid them at all costs. And then the same scripture will say, win the world to Christ. Well, how am I going to avoid and win? Discernment. Detective. We get the word detect. Are you with me? God bless you, Reverend David Riley and Melissa. So we're learning how to discern. We're learning how to gather clues. We're learning how to sit in meetings and gather information. We learn the spirit of negotiation. Ask God to give you a detective spirit. 
I call this lesson detection for the perfection. So as we discover and we're being pushed to the limits to chase after the voice of God, while we're doing that process, God is maturing us and God is matriculating us. So you be thinking and I be thinking that our own personal struggles are just for ourselves, but God is using these things as references so we become teachers to everybody else. You do know at the end of the day, God is turning everybody in the body of Christ into teachers. Now, you might not be a fivefold teacher, but everybody's supposed to teach. You might not be an apostle, but everybody is sent. You might not be a prophet, but everybody's prophetic. You might not be an evangelist, but we're all supposed to win souls. You might not be a pastor, but we should all be shepherded. You got that? Some of these things are functions that came with you at birth. And some things God said you should flow in just because that's what a believer does. <laughs> so sometimes we just we just sometimes we just title driven and title striven. Your title in Ephesians 4 really tell you that's probably how you was born. That's your functionality. And of course, in the American church, we apply titles to everything. So we can categorize stuff. I understand the importance of it because but it becomes abusive when we give somebody a title and it's not really their function. It's just that's what we say in our denomination. So I've discovered something, Sister Linda. I've discovered something, Melissa. I've discovered something, Reverend David Riley, that in Genesis chapter 3, when it says that Adam and his wife heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the cool of the garden, which makes no sense. Since when does God voice walks? Right there, you got to detect that. You got to feel that. You got to try to take that up. What do you mean the voice is walking? That don't make any sense. When does a voice walk? Well, if you only try to interpret the scripture by your American mind or our type of thinking as Americans, that scripture will throw you off. What I tend to do is take these strange sayings that's in the written, the written text and run it around in my mind 30, 40, 50 times and get different points of views and try to sharpen my iron with other, with other folks who I consider to be iron. I want iron to sharpen iron, which means I want to hang out with people who think like I think, who head it in the same direction. I want to sit in rooms with kingdom thinkers, you know, but but the scripture does not say iron sharpens cotton. It says iron sharpens iron. So I asked the Lord to give me people who are iron like me, who I can rub up against. That's why I want to make me wiser. Someone that's just as wise or wiser than I am. Okay? It doesn't mean we have to agree on every tot and tittle, but I do understand it. When I'm in the room of thinkers, I want to rub up against. I don't want to avoid because they challenge me. I don't want to run away because they don't think exactly like I think. I don't want to avoid all white people, avoid all black people, avoid all Republicans, avoid all Democrats, avoid all Baptists, avoid all Pentecostals, because you're an idiot, because there might be iron pieces in that circle that you have to run up against. I tell people, you at your job more than just a paycheck. You're there to rub up against people, you know? You know, sometimes I get, I used to get requests from my younger brother about pray for me. I, you know, I, I'm having a job situation. And Linda, and Melissa, and David, I said, okay, uh, let's pray that God give you that job. And then he would say, oh, getting the job is not a problem. Trying to choose between five offers, that's the problem. <laughs> my, my, my youngest brother never had a problem getting the job. He's such a great worker, such a great thinker that they always offer him the world and he got to come and say, yo, bro, pray for me. I don't know which one to take. <laughs> he can stop at my job. He was in college and say, yo, bro, just stop by and pray. I need you to let me know which one should I do, you know? Yeah, yeah. Which one should I do? You know, and, and all these offers be ridiculous. I'm like, whoa, I don't know how many folk I had that come to me and ask me to pray for them. They got too many job offers. Which one do I detect? Which one I take? You know, because he's such a great worker and he's so, uh, what you call, marketable. And plus, my younger brother got a great personality. He's not loud, you know, smooth and funny. Could have played NBA ball, but he decided I want to go with computers. 
So it's good to be amongst people who are marketable, who think well, and you can rub up against them and gain information and gain knowledge. Only a fool want to hang out with other fools. Only people who always want to keep talking about the past and what used to be fools. I want to find someone who I can grind with and say, let's go make a billion dollars. Let's go transform a community. Let's network with the police department. Let's sit with doctors. Let's create a system where we work together. Let's, let's figure out a way how we can solve problems, make money, and win souls, and make disciples all at the same time. I gotta tell you, man, it is detection for the perfection. Can I say it again? It's the detection for the perfection. All right? It's the detection for the perfection. So let me detect. Let me play the role of the detective. Let me go into Genesis 3 and look at something in the way that maybe I never looked at it before. And here's the question. Here's the thing that baffles me. Why is God's voice walking in the cool of the garden? What does that mean? How is his voice walking in the garden of Eden? That's a strange scripture, and it's not mentioned like that any place else in the rest of the Bible. It's mentioned once. Adam and Eve heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the cool of the garden. So what the biblical text seems to state is that God's voice moves. It has feet. It's mobile. So this is what I discovered. If you can find where God is speaking, if you can pick up on God's voice and know which way he's going, it helps you to move. I found out we have a hearing problem in the body of Christ. Not a going to church building problem. We got a hearing problem. We got our fingers stuck in our ears. Or, watch this, we are foolish to believe that God only speaks one way. But I found out that the voice of God is mobile, is transferable, and is not stagnant. So what this scripture already teaches me, I don't state it, but I see that it's written, you got to get used to God to recognize his voice. So walking close to him enables you to detect his voice. Oh God. Have you ever started to talk to someone and all the words sound right, but the voice is off? Have you ever been talking to someone and they're saying all the right things, but the tone of the voice is off. Come on, y'all, talk to me. Have you ever noticed that you could be talking to your niece or nephew or cousin or girlfriend, boyfriend, or husband, or wife, and although they're saying the right things, you hear their voice crack. You're like, is something wrong? Yeah, yeah. They start crying. Oh, God. So why do you take so long to tell me? I don't want to bother nobody. Yeah. But when they started talking, you already detected something was wrong. Now watch this. If you are matured in this area, if you've been detected for a while, a while, all right, you have been perfected in this area, so I can hear voice tones. I can hear certain things. And even though everybody don't come out and tell you they hurt and they cry, and just the way they speak, you know something is off, something is not accurate. So I learned that here in Genesis chapter 3, that Adam and his wife, before they sinned, was able to detect and recognize the voice of the Lord God. Where? In the Garden of Eden, in the cool of the day. Hearing God's voice and knowing God is speaking to you brings a calmness and a smoothness. Oh boy, I'm going to read. I know Linda got something. I'm going to read that letter. I can't read it yet. Screenshot it from your location. Your comments be pushed out to the back. All right. Hmm. With the garden, it was alive. They just had to pick up on it. That's so good. That's so good. That's so good. Linda Up Ministries. The voice was moving in the garden. We had to pick up on it. We had to detect it. I give you another bonus statement. I have found out that in certain church atmospheres, there's there there are certain spots I can visit and hear God's voice more clear than other atmospheres. I have found out 
that when you enter into a, a well-balanced praise and worship service where God is exalted and all hearts and minds are on one accord, the ears of the believer becomes bigger and are able to pick up from melodies from heaven. See, all of this is taught in Genesis chapter 3. If you're looking for just the literal words to be on paper, you have missed 90% what God's trying to say. There's a whole lot of things being said by Adam and his wife heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. That, that translation is crazy, man. So I learned some things. It matters more, that's what I learned as a detective, as I detect for the perfect. It matters more you train your disciples to detect the voice of God. And wherever God's voice lead me, that is where I am going. I gave you this example yesterday, but I give it to you again. Although we put the voice and the word of God as the exact same thing, it's not the exact same thing. The voice and the word is not the exact same thing. Now watch how I say this. Related, closely connected, sometimes called the same, but with a strict interpretation and an awareness of words, word and voice is not the same. I'm going to give it to you, all right? On my feed right now, I got Reverend David Riley, I got Melissa Collins, I got Linda. Three different people watching me, right? At least. There's a thousand watching me on a sneak tip. But the names that pop up on my feed, three of them got three different voices. If David talks to me on the phone, I know that's David Riley. If I'm talking to Melissa, I said that's Melissa. If I'm talking to Linda, I know that's Linda. I recognize the voice based on the level of our relationship. Now, if I told David to give me and say to me the word truck, and David says truck, and Melissa says truck, and Linda says truck, they all said the same word, but with three different voices. And that's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a major principle in the body of Christ that we miss. The voice of God and the word of God is not the same. Because I can read a word and still not recognize people's voices. See, you spend enough time with your mother or father or your family, and they start talking, I already know who called me. If my son comes at Mike, I don't have to say, is this the one? Is this the one? I don't want to do that. If I do say that, I have it. But I know when he called me, that's the one talking. That's Micaiah talking. That's Maya Leah talking. See, when you, when you spend time and get to know them, you detect their voice. I have figured something out in years of ministry. There are many people who read the word of God and don't know the voice of God. Let me say it again. They read the word of God and don't know the voice of God because voice recognition is, is, is matured by the time you spend in a relationship. So God will purposely tell you, pray to me, commune with me, practice my presence, so when I speak, you can recognize my voice from your voice. Let me tell you something about the voice of God. God is the only God I know that would take your voice, my voice, Michael, and use it as his voice through my voice so that my spirit sounds exactly like God's voice. When God speaks to you, he can't use a foreign voice because it would scare the hell out of you. <laughs> he needs you to speak to yourself. You're, you're going to take your spirit voice and use his voice to your spirit voice. And then you get used to the same thing that this, guess what my spirit said? Guess what God showed me? You, you practice that. And what you're actually doing, you're picking up on the voice of God. It's called voice recognition. You know your cell phone works like that, right? Do y'all know... You know, Reverend Riley, you know this more than anybody else. You do, you better with electronics than I ever be. You, 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 sound and equipment, oh my God. 
David Riley, Dad, I mean, you know, voice recognition is when your phone is so connected to you, some of you got a button on your phone where your phone will only work if it's your voice that's speaking into it. It's called voice recognition. That means so if I steal your phone and try to get your information, your phone shuts down because it does not recognize your voice. Y'all with me? Detection for the perfection. So I want to practice detecting God's voice so God can continue to perfect my lifestyle. It looks like the more I recognize God's voice and which way he leads me, which way to follow, it increases my life and my recognition with my relationship with Christ Jesus. That's why I call it detection for the perfection. I want to be able, and please give me everybody, I want to be able to recognize what God is doing in this time and in this hour. I don't want to get into, I can just read the Bible. I just know scriptures. I'm far past first grade, baby. I know folks who memorize scriptures and they have no voice recognition relationship with God. I want to be able, watch this, because I'm talking about the voice that moves. Have you ever experienced this, Delon? Have you ever experienced this, David? You, you in prayer before you leave your house, right? You claim something. You need God to give you a breakthrough in an area. And you go, you know, arbitrarily, you go get your hair cut. Or you go sit in the beauty salon. And you know you ask God to do something and you haven't told a soul, you haven't told nobody, just you and God, God and Him. And while you're getting your hair cut, two barbers are holding the conversation. Stay with me. I'm, I'm going to hit some of y'all with this. And you're not trying to eavesdrop purposely, but you can't help it because you didn't get your hair cut. And they're okay, you listen to them. And they're talking about a subject matter that has nothing to do with you. Nothing. Nothing. And while they're talking, as I'm eavesdropping on their conversation, not on purpose, I can't help it. They're holding a conversation that answers my morning prayer. And I hear God go, boop, 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 boop. That's my voice talking. Then my spirit tell me, listen, Mike, it's talking. Here's your answer. And then after the conversation, I said, yo, man, what's your name? He said, my name's Jose. I said, I said, do you know me? He said, oh, I don't know. Who are you? I said, Reverend McDuffie, I heard you, man. You start talking. I said, man, I needed something, and you answered my prayer. He said, how's that? We go to talk, and then all of a sudden, I go see him. And we get connected. God said, thank you for detecting my voice. That had nothing to do with finding a scripture in the Bible. See, if you keep limiting God to his only voice is to quote scriptures, you are in first grade. And I met preachers who got degrees on walls and they're still sitting in the kinder kindergarten class. They go 60 and 70 year old men sitting in these little desks because they've never matriculated in detecting God's voice because they're so deep by thinking they know God's word. Oh boy, oh boy. Now I figured out why the best translation of Deuteronomy 28, in my point of view, it says, obey the voice of the Lord thy God and I'll set you on high. That's the best translation for Deuteronomy 28. The King James Version really does a great job. When you, when you, when you study Deuteronomy chapter 28, which is the great uh, chapter of blessings and cursings. And what that scripture seems to entail is obey the voice of the Lord thy God. Obey the voice of the Lord thy God, and I will put you up on high. So, that is, so, so it looks like not only does God require me to read and study his word, there seems to be a deeper connotation to the emphasis you place on voice recognition. And how do you recognize someone's voice? You spend time with them, which is really walking in the cool of the garden. See, it's crazy. I mean, as a DJ, we pray for you this morning too. God bless you. I pray for everybody in KOM. I lift up everybody. Glory be to God. Mm -hmm. My son of God Church, we have a special prayer line just for a apostolic church for a half hour every Friday. And so if you want to be part of that, let me know. I'm not pushing that publicly too much. Not like the folk God give me. 
I'm doing a whole lot of stuff that's quite stealth. I'm not including everybody in every circle. My thing, if you have a desire to come for me, I'm not coming for you. I'm not doing that. You want it? Come get it. Now, I want to read something to you. And please get me. Thank you. I got my first seed this morning. Thank you to Peter's Award, the Sister Michelle. Thank you for stepping in and continuing to sow seed. Thank you so much. I want to read it the way I want to say it. I want to, I want to look at two things. I'm part now. I got the 807. I want to, I want to first read Genesis 3 the way I want to read it. I want to read it from the King James Version. And this is after Adam and his wife fell. You look at verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Now, I'm not going past the semicolon because I can finish it with, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And I want to get into that because this verse here is enough to get me going for six months. I mean, it's the DJ, you know, Kingdom Legacy and Delon Harris and the Capstone. It says in verse eight, and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. So here's something. The voice was always heard. But it looks like due to Adam and Eve falling, now they hear the voice differently. It's not a voice of I'm close to God, I'm coming for you. Now that voice becomes convicting, almost can make one uh, enter into condemnation. And now that running from God versus running to God. So basically, when you decide to rebel against God, you don't want to hear from him. You know, it's it's funny that our bodies could be in the seat in church, but our minds and spirits are so far removed. I've seen people sit in churches for years and they've never been there. Let me say it again. I've seen people sit in church buildings for years and never been there. They occupy space, never there. They're not being trained, not being equipped, they're not engaged in the ministry. I mean, they just, they're there for the song fest. They're there to get phone numbers. They're there to be the, the top winner of the of the hat award. I mean, man, people is it's not gathering at the church building, you know, for discipleship training. <laughs> I would like that to be the case. A lot of reasons, man. <laughs> Poor, I could give some stories. But I said, I, I said, why do you attend church? services. I got to add that. Why do you attend church services? And the reason you get, boy, whoo, I'll be like, boy, Christ definitely not coming back anytime soon. Because the answers I get, I'll be like, boy, we really off. My God. I'm, you're watching my 4100, and I'm teaching on detection for the perfection. And I really believe that when you detect God's voice and you understand God's word, this allows you to know where God is going. And so just in Genesis 3, verse 8, it says they heard the voice. That means what is really prayer? Then, then here is the thing, Minister DJ. Then Pastor, what's really prayer? What's this? To pick up on his voice. Did y'all catch me? Prayer is really not claiming stuff and asking God to bless you and give me a car, give me a house, give me a boo, give me a queen, and give me uh, toenails. Uh, geez, you know, the Lord is really not I dream a genie and bewitch. You know, real prayer, and even though the word prayer is not written in the text in this portion of scripture, the word prayer shows up when Abraham comes on the scene. And uh, Noah... Uh, Cain and Abel Adam and his wife all of them were in prayer but the word called prayer written the way we understand it doesn't show up to Abraham come are you trying to say that prayer only started when Abraham mentions it stop prayer is your communion with the Lord your connection to him that's why you can actually pray without ceasing, which means stay in an upright relationship with God 24-7. Lean into what he tells you to do, and that prayer cycle is not broken. 
and it seems to be a peace of mind that keeps you cool in the midst of the garden. Mm. <laughs> Mr. DJ, you could get yourself killed. You can't say something like that. Only I can say it. <laughs> That's my little my old my original secretary, Daniel Johnson. Always been on point. Love that girl. Never rebel. Always protects Pastor Mike. I love folk like you. Never throw me under the bus. God bless you. I said we got so much to do. Now he is returning. He is coming to take us to heaven. You know, some of us are going to heaven a little bit earlier. <laughs> so when I say detection for the perfection. I'm saying that we need to mature in terms of picking up on the sounds of heaven. Kurt Franklin wrote a song, Melodies from heaven rain down. He's really saying is there is a music that comes from heaven that we must detect. Voice recognition is based on the time spent with the person you're trying to recognize, be around. So prayer really means to spend time in God's presence constantly and consistently. So whenever he speaks, how he speaks, where he speaks, what he speaks, I can detect it. And once you detect it more and more, God starts to perfect your relationship. Nothing is more sexier. Nothing is more powerful. Nothing is more soothing than to know that God told you something. And Linda knows this, and those in KOM know this. If Michael heard from God, that's the only yes he needs. Now, some of y'all need two confirmations, three confirmations, six confirmations, seven confirmations. You could be like Jesus saw it one time and said, pick up your bed and walk. So I'm to a point now at 60 years old, I said, I don't have time to go back and forth with people. I really don't. I know where God's taking me. I said, you want to go? Come with me. If you're not on my side, go find somebody else. I'm serious. I, mean, I, I still love and respect you, but you're not getting in my way. Nope. You're not going to control and manipulate what God told me. And I'm accountable. I got a senior pastor. I got a group of folk I'm accountable to, so I'm not wild and rowdy like there'll be some folk we trying to say I am. It's just that I don't have time for foolishness and playing games and wasting time when I'm 60. Every day count. Every day count. Remember, we, my wife and I go to the mall and spend time walking up and down that hallway. We go to that mall, maybe about an hour, but like, oh, I'm ready to go home. <laughs> my, my tolerance is not that long anymore. I'm, like, All right, I'm ready. I'm done. We went, got a little sandwich, sat down, looked, as I'm ready to go home. I'm good in front of the TV. I'm just, I'm done. Because I know in the next two or three days, I'm going to have to minister to someone that's sick, that's in a hospital, someone's going to call me. So you get, after a while, you'd be like, okay, guys, okay, that's enough. Go ahead, go ahead home. Go ahead, relax. Go ahead. See, see, you, you, you start preserving your strength. You start preserving your time, man. To me, it matters more to find some place in God's presence to talk to him because I want to recognize his voice. So watch this. So his voice can guide me. What did Linda say? Linda says something. I'm going to read it once part. I'm going to read this. And Linda, this is up. Linda, Linda makes, Linda make these crazy statements. I really tell her she's wasting her money. All these statements she makes should be in a book. God's voice walking in the garden meant that it was moving throughout the garden. It was alive. They just had to pick up on it and perceive it. That is such a deep statement. That's a Sunday school class for years. And we're not even taught in Sunday school how to detect God's voice. We're taught how to read Bibles. I can imagine some pastor out there think, because you read a Bible, you deep. I need to be taught how to recognize his voice. And watch this. And the way it came, what time it came. Don't tell me you want to hear from God and you don't have any type of way to record it, write it down. There are times that God shows me things. And I go right to my phone. I put it in my notes or text it to myself or certain things happen. And God said, if you don't write it down, you're going to forget what I said. If you don't, if you don't put a semicolon there, sometimes I put posts on my feed. So I can say, God showed that to me. God spoke that to me. Remember the other day, Dr. Brown, remember the other day I showed you a picture of the kitten on the dashboard and the hawk or the falcon swooped down to try to get the kitten and the kitten wasn't moving. I'm looking at the video that Micaiah sent me. I said, well, how, come, how come the hawk and the falcon don't just snatch the kitten up? 
What happened was I was in a room when Kaya sent me the clip and I couldn't hear it click. I couldn't see it and hear it clearly. So I moved myself from a noisy space and went to a quiet space. And I recognized that the kitten was behind the windshield. I couldn't see the windshield. It was on a dashboard. And what was protecting the hawk from the kitten was the windshield. And then God's voice says, I'll be your shield and your buckler. He said, the hawk tried to destroy you, but I put a hedge of protection around you. He's not only for you. I did that for you, your family, and KOM. He says, your intercessory prayers, your tithing and giving stops the fowler and the bird from attacking. I said, oh, shoot. I said, oh, God. And I put it on my page, and I just kind of jot it down. So every time I see that clip, I'm practicing picking up on the voice of God. Oh, yes. Dr. Bright is so profound, trying to grab it through the window. And the window was the shield. Wind, shield. The wind shielded the attack from the enemy. Which God says the enemy will form, but it won't work because there's a shield, wind shield protecting. We don't even know yet that our intercessory prayers, our tithing and offering blocks the enemy from getting to our kids. Our relatives, there are many people you're going to figure out in the next life stayed alive because you got up at three o'clock in the morning and walked the floor and prayed. God bless you. God bless you, Elsie. I'm, we don't even know the importance of a praying mother. We have no idea. Access, you should be dead. But you put the windshield up. The voice of God is to be detected. You got to get up and God, you said, so Mr. Pastor, every time I go to sleep at night, I got to get up at three o'clock in the morning. And Pastor Sharon said, "Ah, uh, that's what George, that's what George Carver did to get all those uh, peanuts instructions. He met with God four o'clock in the morning. And somebody said, Pastor, my prayer thing too early. I remember when I first did that. Somebody told me that's too early. I said, Oh, get out of here. I'm telling you, I already got time to deal with ignorance. Too early. Davis is early what I seek thing. We do it once a week and folks still be fussing. Half an hour. Folks be still fussing. And the Lord said, why you fuss? Why waste time? I, I'm to a point to folks once, twice, I don't do it, I go on. The things I told people to do, they don't do it. I said, okay. I'll okay you. I'll be like, okay. When I say okay, I mean, I'm not doing, I'm not saying it no more. I said, okay. I just keep going. You're going to get it. Now, you might not get it two years later, but I already told you. I, certain things I require people. And after while you're around me, you know me enough. I say, I told you two times. If you don't do it, then boo on you. I'm telling you, man, boo on you. <laughs> I said, listen, I said, listen, sister, you uh, you're 60 pounds overweight. Why? Listen, I'm gonna give you the voice of God. You gotta lose that belly fat because that creates sugar diabetes. You gotta go after that. You gotta cut the belly fat. You gotta cut it. Get in the gym. You gotta walk. You gotta see moths. You you gotta cut the belly fat. You gotta stop. You gotta stop because two inches over your belt, you become a candidate for sugar diabetes. They start cutting off toes, cutting off ears. Man, that stuff is dangerous. You gotta change now. Change now. Change now. 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 See, so yeah, I become the voice of God. Now, either you're gonna eat from that tree, or kid, eat, continue to eat from your tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The voice of a God, it, the voice of God moves and must be detected. And what I call this message, detection for the perfection. You better say it, Dr. Brown. You better say it. You better say it, Elsie. You got so many testimonies. You better say it. Three minutes. Let me read one more scripture to you. I'm done. I'm done at 807. Got to go. Uh, and I'm going to read it to you just the way I want to, just the way I want to say it. I like the King James Version because I think it interprets this verse. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. Watch this. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. To do what? To observe and to do all of his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. Which means our success in ministry is not based on how wicked the devil is or how great God is. It's based on who detects God's voice. See, see, it's right here. Look, you can read, and the best translation is King James Version on this one. 
28 verse 1 and it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to what to observe and to do all of his commandments and do you know Adam and his wife violated this whole verse 1 which put the whole world in danger you supposed to hearken unto his voice and the word hearken really means to stop look listen observe so when God begins to speak, you're supposed to do as Minister DT says, ding, 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 ding. Wait a minute, wait a minute. God's moving. Wait a minute, wait a minute. God just showed me something. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, I'm sorry, y'all. I can't go on this plane. God told me don't catch this one. I'm sorry, I'm catching the next one. Come to find the plane crash. You know, you understand that Felix Mian used to play for the New York Mets. was supposed to be in the same plane that went down with Roberto Clemente. But he didn't go down the plane. Roberto Clemente's son told his father don't catch the plane. He had a dream that the plane went down and his father ignored his son's warning. He ignored the voice. So the voice of God comes to save you, to protect you, to preserve you. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. I like that, Dr. Brown. Good. That's good. I love that. I love that. I hope folk get used to that. All right. I got to go. 807, go sow your seed this morning. Dallas, I'm past Michael 7. PayPal address, supermite 777 gmail.com. I got to go. When God requires you to get up 3 to 5 a.m., there is an intimacy that takes place. Anytime you put your flesh under subjection to be obedient to God, God loves it. That's good, which is really worship. <laughs> I got to go. Love y'all. Sow your seed today. Make it happen. Make it do what it do.